I'm Donnie. I'm the designer for Nomi Patterns 2041. So 2041 is a pair of convertible zip-off pants. They go up to a size 48 inch or 120 centimeters for the waist. Um, and this pattern is just for the pants, but these pants have a lot going on with them. So here is a pair of these convertible zip-offs that I've made in a light medium weight cotton twill uh, for our sew along today. Uh, these pants have, uh, in addition to the zip-offs, they also have an integrated belt. Uh, but since I love clipping things to myself, they still have belt loops. And they also have an extra loop on the inside pocket for extra clipping things. So if I can grab it out. Here it is. So that just sits inside the front left pocket. Speaking of pockets, they've got a bunch. So they've got your normal two front slash pockets, but they've also got an extra front patch pocket on the right hand side. And they also have two back patch pockets. Uh, the lower legs also have a bit going on with them too. So the front has an extra long patch along it. Uh, and this is for extra dur durability if you want or need it. The inseams have a zipper along the bottom. Um, and this is so you can take the lower legs off without taking off your shoes, or yeah, without taking off your shoes and without taking off uh, the top of your pants. Um, I will say that the zippers are long enough for probably sneakers or regular shoes. But if you, you plan on wearing these with uh, proper hiking boots um, or hardcore hiking boots, I would extend the inseam zipper by at least a couple inches. Uh, there's also a pull tab along the hem, just so you can tighten the hem if you need it. Um, and those are all the features that come to my mind right now with these pants. So uh, let's sew them. So today I'm using a light to medium weight uh, cotton twill. Um, I have already finished, I've already cut out all the pieces and finished all the edges with a zigzag stitch and I've transferred any relevant markings from the pattern to my uh, cut piece, cut pattern pieces. Uh, you will need two front pieces, uh, two back pieces, um, and a lot of pockets. So uh, there's one front patch pocket, uh, which has a flap. There are two back patch pockets, which each have their own flap. There are also front slash pockets, so you will need a pocket facing and the side front pocket. Uh, I don't know if this will translate on camera, but my pocket facing is a slightly different fabric than the rest of my uh, pants, and that's because I ran out of fabric, so it is not intentionally different. Um, you also need a uh, right fly guard and a left fly facing for the pants. You will need uh, a long rectangle to cut out all the belt loops and the uh, left uh, key ring loop on the front slash pocket or the front left slash pocket. Uh, and you will need several waistband pieces. So there is, you will cut out two left waistbands and one of them will be interfaced. There are two uh, right waistbands and one of them is interfaced. And you will need a total of four back waistband pieces, um, two of which you will interface. You will need, um, now onto the lower legs, you will need uh, the lower leg, two lower leg pieces for the front, and they each have a double front or knee patch for more durability if you want that. And you will need uh, the lower leg pieces for the back. Um, and finally, you will need uh, four of these tab pieces. These are for the uh, pull tab on the bottom hem, and two of them will be interfaced.
Okay, so we're gonna do things a little out of order. I'm just going to prepare all my pockets at the same time. Um, and I'll just start with the back ones because that's the one in front of me. Uh, now, if you're like me and you have a little bit of trouble getting around corners on your machine, um, you can just draw on the seam line you're supposed to be sewing over or marking it with chalk. I'm using a water soluble marker, so when I'm done, I can just rinse off his pants and they'll, these marks will disappear. Okay, and these marks will just help me sew uh, a cleaner rounded edge when I get to it. Uh, so next we'll want to press down this top edge um, in by about a quarter of an inch. And then we will press it again along this line, um, right sides together. All right, so I've pressed my Pocket. I don't think I said this in the last clip, but I did trim the rounded corners with some pinking shears. Um, if you don't have pinking shears, you can just trim closely with the regular pair of scissors. I don't think you necessarily need to um, use pinking shears. Um, and now we're going to stitch along the bottom edge of this fold. Um, actually, before I sew it, I'm going to trim off some of this excess to save on bulk. All right, so I'm gonna give this another press and then we're going to attach the uh, hook and loop closure or one side of the hook and loop closure to uh, this marked rectangle. Okay, so I've repressed the top edge of my pocket and I've cut out these uh, about one and a quarter inch slivers of hook and loop or velcro closures. Um, and we're going to attach the soft side of the hook and loop closure to the pocket. Um, and so I'm just going to do a straight stitch or a straight edge stitch along the edge of this, the soft side of this, this hook and loop closure.
Okay, so let's work on our pocket flaps. All right, so here are my two uh, back flap pieces. I'm now going to sew them right sides together along the side and bottom edges. Okay, and now I'm going to trim the bottom edges. And now I'm going to turn this out and then press it flat. So now that I've pressed the back flap, I'm now going to edge, edge stitch the top of the flap. And I'm going to attach the rough side of the hook and loop closure to the back of this flap. Okay. So I've stay stitched the top edge of this back flap and I have attached the uh, rough side of the Velcro closure to the bottom of this flap. And now I'm going to uh, edge stitch along the side and bottom edges of this flap. Okay, so now I have my back flap and my... Okay, so now that I have my back flap and my uh, back pocket uh, pressed and ready to be attached to the pants, I'm going to finish working on the other back patch pocket and the front patch pocket um, before I actually put them onto the pants. Okay, so now I have my pockets and pocket flaps all sewn up, and now it's time to attach them to their respective um, pant pieces. So I'm gonna start with the front pocket, and I'm gonna start by attaching the patch pocket to the uh, right front, and once that's on, I will attach the back flap.
Um, so before I begin, I'm just going to pin all the way around. So now that I've sewn around the edge of the pocket, I'm going to clip off the threads and then sew again about a quarter inch away from the stitch line that I just made. Now that this line is sewn, I'm going to trim down the extra fabric or seam allowance, and then I'm going to press this flap over and then top stitch along the edge. So to construct the uh, belt loops or carriers, we will first fold this large rectangle in half, wrong sides together. And then once we've pressed it, we are going to fold it from the outer edge to the crease line. And we'll do the same thing for the other side and press. Now I'm going to cut this piece into uh, six different pieces that are four and a quarter inches long. Um, actually, I'm just going to cut off one piece that's four and a quarter inches long because otherwise I will probably lose the rest of them by the time I get to sewing on the belt loops. Hello, uh, this is Editing Donnie here. I must have not pressed record at the step, so I'll just quickly recap it with the cut pattern pieces here. Uh, so for attaching the uh, internal pocket loop, um, the pattern and instructions will have you attach the loop to the uh, dot corresponding to the size of your left pattern piece. So this is just the normal pattern piece, but I flipped it over to better represent the left side. Um, you could attach it here, but I personally think it's easier if you attach it to the corresponding area of your pocket facing. So rather than attaching your loop to the pant piece, I would attach it here on the right side of your pocket facing. That way when you sew along this edge and you eventually turn it in, The pocket, the, the loop will be on the inside of your pocket. And then it will be captured when you sew on the side pocket edge. So 
So now it's time to attach the front slash pockets. So now I'm going to take the pocket facing, place it right sides together on my front piece, front pants piece, and then I'm going to stitch along this edge. Okay, now I'm going to cut off the excess seam allowance and then press the pocket facing away and then understitch along this edge. I've just finished understitching this edge, so now I'm going to turn the pocket facing away, and then press. I've just finished pressing this edge, so now I'm going to top stitch it. Now that this upper edge is top stitched, I'm going to attach the uh, pocket bag or the, the remainder of the pocket bag. To do that, I'm just going to match up the notches roughly. Make sure this is all lined up. Then I'm going to sew around this side bottom, other side edge. Now that my pocket is attached, I'm going to baste along the top edge and the side edge of the pocket bag. Now that I have my pockets together, I want to attach the front and back legs together along their inseam. And I'm going to do this for both the right and the left legs. So now I want to start putting together the lower leg pieces. To start that, I'm going to sew around the edge of these front patch pieces. I'm going to sew them at 3 8 inch of a seam allowance, um, and I'm going to use that stitching line as a guide to fold uh, in the edges before I attach that to, or before I attach them to the front lower leg pieces. I've just finished attaching the patch to the lower front leg, and now I want to attach the, lo the lower front leg to the lower back leg, and I'm going to sew them right sides together. So this edge to this edge. I'm going to match them along the notches, and I'm only going to sew until I hit uh, these large dots. And I want to leave this um, 
the section below these dots open because that's where we'll be putting our inseam zipper. So now I have my lower front and my lower leg pieces attached. I'm going to press the seam open and press it flat. And then we will attach the zippers along the top edge. So I have my top right leg and my lower right leg. And now I want to attach the zip off portion of the pant. So I've made a couple markings on my uh, fabric pieces so it will be easier to see. Uh, so I've marked a quarter inch away from the edge and that's where I'll want to place my zipper tape. I've also marked in 5 eighths inch, which is my seam allowance, inside the uh, side seam edges for both the top and uh, lower leg. I've also done it on the other side. And the distance between these two lines is how long I want my uh, zipper to be, because I don't want, uh, when I sew the side seam, I don't want my needle catching the uh, bottom stop or the uh, top stops. So my zipper is a little too long for uh, this length. So if I quickly just hand measure it, I can see I've got like several inches of extra zipper tape. So I'm going to shorten that real quick. I have some, I don't have any top stops, but I do have these bottom stops. They're They'll serve essentially the same purpose. They'll just be a little, a little longer than what your normal top stop would look like. Um, so I'm going to first mark on my zipper where I want it to end. I can find my, can't find my marker, but I'll mark it here. Then I'm going to unzip, clip off the excess teeth, and then attach my top stops. So now I have my shortened um, zipper. And um, I'm going to be honest, uh, the exact instructions about what side to put the top or bottom on in the printed instructions aren't going to be always relevant because the side that your slider is on is going to be different between zippers, depending on what kind of zipper you buy or like where you buy your zippers from. So the most important thing is that when you're sewing your zipper, onto your uh, fabric pieces. You'll want to have the zipper facing down onto the right side of the fabric. And you'll be stitching the um, zipper tape along the edge of the uh, quarter inch marking you made. You'll also want to make sure that your top stop or your, your top stop and your bottom stop are within your seam allowance. That way they don't catch the needle. So I'm being careful to make sure that my, yeah, my zipper is face down, and that the zipper tape is along the edges, a quarter inch marking I made. Um, so now I'm going to pin the zippers, the zipper tape to my fabric, and then I'm going to baste along the zipper tape really quick just to hold it in place. Um, I'll just, I'm gonna use my machine to baste it. You can hand baste it if you want. Um, but once I'm done basting it, I'm going to switch out my presser foot to a zipper foot and then sew the zipper to the uh, pant fabric.
Okay, I've just finished basting the zippers to uh, the edges of my uh, pant pattern pieces. So now I've switched to a zipper foot and I'm going to sew um, about as close as I can get. Well, maybe not too close, but um, pretty close to the zipper teeth and attach the um, zipper tape to my fabric with a uh, regular stitch length. All right, so I've finished attaching the zippers to both the lower and top edges of these pants. Um, I've put the lower legs away for now, so it would be easier to sew this next step. So now we're going to attach the uh, front fly to the front of the pants. And to do that, we're first going to sew between this notch and this large dot. Uh, now that my front pieces are connected, I'm going to focus on just the right front piece. I'm going to fold this along the edge right here by 3 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to press it. And then I'm going to sew my zipper foot or my zipper to that pressed edge using a zipper foot as close as I can, or pretty close, um, along the folded edge. So I've pressed the front right piece along this edge right here. Now I'm going to take my zipper and match the bottom stop to the dot, the smaller dot, on my right front pattern piece. Then I'm going to baste it along this edge before I move on. Um, and I have a little bit of excess zipper here. That's OK. I'll just snip it off at the end. So now I have the zipper basted to the right side of my pants. I'm now going to construct the fly shield. So I'm going to fold this in half. Oh, this is interfaced, by the way. Now I'm going to fold it in half, hot dog style, uh, and stitch along this bottom edge. Um, from there, I'll trim, turn it inside out, fold it the other way, and then baste along the long edge. And uh, now my right fly shield is together or base it along this long edge right here. I'm going to take my right side again or right, my right front again, turn it over to the wrong side and then match it to the pattern. 
Now I'm going to quickly pin it in place. Or I'll, I'll do it later. Um, but I'm going to pin this and I'm based along the basting line I made on this uh, fly shield one more time. Um, so now my shield, my fly shield is pinned. Um, I ended up just switching my pins over to the other side. Um, so instead of basting my fly shield to my pants to my zipper, I'm just going to sew straight through. So now my right fly is together, I'm going to construct the left fly. So I have the left fly facing, I've already interfaced it. So now I'm going to sew it right sides together with my pant pattern. And I'm going to sew from the top edge all the way down to the large dot, um, which I guess it's hard, you can't see it from this side, but it's right here. Um, once I'm done sewing it, I'm going to press the facing and then understitch on the facing. All right, so I have just finished pressing my understitching and then pressing my left fly facing in. So now I want to attach the zipper from the right side to the left side. So now I have my left fly shield um, understitched and pressed to the other side of the left side of my pants. Um, and now I want to attach the uh, other side of the zipper tape to my left uh, fly shield facing, or sorry, just my left zip facing. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to lay the right side down flat. Make sure it's all smooth. And then I'm going to lay my left side over on it flat, making sure it's smooth, making sure things are, look, are looking good here. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to, you know, keeping my hand on all the layers, I'm going to flip this around and then hold down the shield or the fly facing onto the other side of the zipper tape and now i'm going to uh, take some pins and pin through the shield or not the shield the facing and the zipper tape but i don't want to catch the shield that's on the very bottom so now i have the uh, left fly facing Pinned to the other side of the zipper tape, and I was careful that it didn't that it didn't uh, pin through the right fly shield. So now I want to sew um, along this uh, side of the zipper tape, uh, kind of close to the uh, teeth, but of course not too close, otherwise you won't be able to pull on your zipper. Um, before I do that, I think I'll switch the um, well. Actually, the Instructions tell you to base here, but I don't think I need to do that. So I'm just going to pin again from the other side, um, switch over to a zipper foot, and then sew the tape, uh, the zipper tape down.
Now that my uh, the other end of the zipper is attached to the left facing, I'm going to sew um, around this guideline to uh, to attach the left facing to the uh, front of the left of the pants. Um, there's a little bit of gaping here, but I think that'll be fixed once I have attached the fly facing. All right, I've just stitched along this guideline to attach the rest of my facing to the left side of my pants. Um, and this next step is optional, but I'm going to bar tack along the edge or along the bottom of my fly. So my fly is now constructed. <clears throat> I'm now going to finish off the rest of the center seams. So I'm going to match the inseams. I'm going to match these notches. I'm going to give it a few more pins. And now I'm going to sew from where I left off, where that big circle was, and sew all the way to the other end. I've just finished sewing these uh, pants together along the center seam, and it all looks good to me. Things are matching. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to press the seam allowance to one side and then top stitch, and that will help reinforce the stitching. So I've pressed the uh, lower leg edge away from the zipper and now what I'm going to do is um, actually I'm going to trim off uh, these extra seam allowances here to save or reduce the bulk in the area what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edge stitch on this folded edge so that the edge of this lower pant stays nice and neat. And I'm going to do that for um, both sides. So I want to start working on the side seams now. Uh, to start that, I've attached the lower legs back to the shorts. And now I'm going to put the back and the front pieces together, right sides together. I'm going to match them along the zipper and all the notches that are on the pattern. And then I'm going to sew straight down the sides from top to the bottom of the shorts, and I'll reinforce along where the zipper attaches. And then I'll sew uh, from the lower legs, reinforcing where the zipper attaches, and then all the way down to the bottom of the pant hem. 
So I've finished sewing the side seams for both the shorts and the lower legs. And I have also pressed the uh, side seams flat. I've also traced out the hems with my washable marker. So on the shorts, it will be uh, one and five eighths inches away from the raw edge, or the zigzag edge in my case. Um, and for the lower legs, you'll want to draw a line that is, or you don't have to draw it if that's not your style, but you'll be folding in a quarter inch of the raw edge and folding in a total of one and three quarters of an inch. Um, so I'm going to uh, press those in place and then sew them down. So now it's time to sew the inseam zipper onto the pant. And what you want to do is, so this is the front side of my pants. It's the one with the front patch. And this is the back of my pant. Uh, on the back of your pant, you're going to fold in the edge by half an inch. And on the front side of your pant, you're going to fold in the edge by five eighths of an inch. And this will uh, let us have a, a, a lap that's about an eighth of an inch um, wide. And that will cover our zipper when we put it in. Um, I'm using this contrast zipper today because I bought the wrong size of a slightly better matching zipper color. Um, but since it should supposedly be covered, I think that'll be fine. So I've just pressed my inseam in by 5 eighths of an inch on the front side and half an inch on the back side. Now I'm going to stitch the back folded edge to my zipper. And I'm going to line it up so that the top stop is you know, not quite at the end, but pretty close to the edge or the hem of these pant, this pant leg. Um, so I'm going to pin this and then stitch down just the uh, side, the back leg side to the zipper tape. So now my zipper is attached to the back side of the leg. Now I'm going to lap the front side over by, should be about an eighth of an inch. Matching this. And then we're going to sew from here down to this edge. And we're going to try and catch uh, just the pant leg and the zipper tape to connect it to our pant pattern. Um, but first I'm going to, to make it easy for myself, I'm going to baste the leg to the zipper tape. So I've just finished uh, quickly hand basting the front of the leg to my zipper tape. Um, and now I want to sew uh, actually stitch it down. Now the instructions say to sew at 3 eighths of an inch, but um, away from the uh, front edge. Uh, but I think the actual number may depend on how wide your zipper is. Um, and I suspect, just based on feeling it, 3 eighths of an inch might not be wide enough for me. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it is, but um, I have, I guess, relatively thin zipper teeth, and I don't know. That might be a little too close for comfort for me, especially since I won't be viewing the zipper teeth as I sew. 
I think I'll just do half an inch. along this edge. I'm going to square it out at the end. Um, I'm just going to make sure that's not where the bottom stop is. No, it's up here, so I won't be catching it with my needle. All right, so I'm going to sew along this line I just drew, and then I'll remove this, the facing stitches, and then we will be done with attaching the zipper to our leg pattern. All right, I've just finished stitching the uh, zipper to the front of my lower leg pattern. Um, it looks mostly good to me. However, um, I've noticed that at least on the beginning of the zipper, it's a little wonky. So I'm going to fix that really quickly. And then I will press uh, this area again, and then we can move on. I should also mention that when I went in to fix the zipper, I also turned in the raw edge of my zipper or the ends of my zipper so it would be hidden away from the hem. Um, the instructions tell you to fold it over the hem, but since my zipper is a very different color, I'm just going to tuck it in um, and keep it out of sight that way. Uh, so now I'm going to sew the pull tabs that are going to go at the bottom of the pant leg. Um, I have four pieces total for the two tabs, and two of them are interfaced. So I'm going to take one side that's inter one of the tabs that's interfaced, and one that isn't, and then I'm going to sew around one long edge, a short edge, and the other long edge at a three eighths inch seam allowance. And I'm going to leave one short side open so I can. Uh, turn out the tab when I'm done. So I've just finished sewing and pressing my and turning out uh, my pull tabs. Um, be careful when you push out the corners because you can see here I got a little too aggressive and now I have some of this frayed fabric pushing through. Um, I'm just going to a little bit of fray check on these corners, but I'm also going to edge stitch around uh, these three sides for uh, both of my tabs. Uh, now I've just finished top stitching my pull tabs. I've also basted the open ends uh, right here, and now I want to attach the hooking loop closure or the, the Velcro. So I've got the rough side of my hook and loop closures, and now I'm going to attach them to the end of my pull tabs on the side with the interface. Let me just check. Yeah, that's the side. And OK, great. This is the side. So now I'm just going to edge stitch around the edges of the uh, hook and loop closure, or the hooks of this hook and loop closure. Hello, this is Editing Donnie, just jumping in to say that none of the audio in the remaining clips were recorded or they were recorded uh, very choppily. So I'm just going to voice over the remaining of this sew along. So in this section, I am attaching the soft side of my hook and loop closure to the hem of my pant uh, on the drawn markings. So I made my uh, loop closures an inch longer than the uh, recommended size of the pattern and this just allows me to have a little bit more flexibility in how much I want to tighten my hem.
Now I'm attaching the pull tab to the bottom of the hem, matching the basted edge with the dots drawn on the bottom of the hem on the front side. Um, importantly, I want the uh, unsewed edge pointing towards the inseam. That way I can fold it over and sew down it again to enclose that raw edge. So after I sewed the pull tab to the bottom hem of the pant, I then sewed a quarter inch into the edge of the pull tab. Then I sewed an inch and a half away from the first sew line. Then I went straight across to the other edge of the pull tab and then sewed down a quarter inch again. And this helps make um, a nice square on the pull tab which also reinforces the tab and helps it not get ripped off so easily. Here I'm reattaching the remainder of my belt loops to my pants or the top of my pants along the uh, dots that are marked that were marked along the pant pattern. And I'm just going to base those to the top of my pants, uh, not quite at messy amounts, maybe at like half an inch instead of five eighths of an inch. After my belt loops were attached, uh, I then assembled the uh, waistband. So here I'm showing all of my waistband pieces. I have four back, back waistband pieces, two right front waistband pieces, and two left front waistband pieces. Um, and half of those are interfaced. So the interfaced ones are going to act as the front of our, of our waistband and the uninterfaced pieces will be the facing that we keep on the inside of our pants. Before I attach the waistband together, I actually sewed on one inch buttonholes where they were marked on the pattern. And this will serve as the opening for our integrated belt. Here I've just finished assembling my waistband and I have also pressed the seam allowances flat. Um, and now I'm going to attach it to the pants, matching the side seams and the center seam uh, of the pants with the side seam and center seams of the waistband. Here is my waistband facing. Um, I've already sewn it and I've pressed the seam allowances flat. 
I've also turned the bottom edge, which is the edge with the notches, uh, and I've pressed it by half an inch. And I've also trimmed the seam allowances where the folded edge is, um, and this will help reduce some of the bulk along the waistband. So I've just sewn the waistband facing to the waistband. And uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to trim off the little corner pieces of my seams. Um, and this will again help reduce bulk. Finally, I'm going to press the seam allowance towards the facing and edge stitch along as much of the waistband as I can. I'm not going to be able to do it well uh, along the corners, but I'm just going to get as much as I can. Here, I'm stitching the waistband facing to the waistband and I'm doing that by stitching in the ditch. So from the front side of my pants where I've already sewn on my waistband, I'm going to sew in that groove where the pant and the waistband meet. Uh, and hopefully my stitches will catch the waistband facing on the other side. I've just finished attaching the waistband facing to the waistband, and you can see that I've done a mostly okay job. The th stitching has gone through and caught the waistband facing, but it's a little wobbly in some areas. Overall, it's okay for me though, since this is going to be on the inside of the garment anyway, and at least the uh, raw edges are tucked away. Before I attach the top of the belt loops to the waistband, I'm going to sew them down half an inch away from the bottom of the waistband. And I'm just marking that here with my washable marker to help guide me. Once I've sewn down the bottom of the belt loop, I'm then going to fold down the top of the belt loop by about half an inch and so pretty close to the edge, maybe like a quarter or even an eighth of an inch away. Now that my belt loops are attached, I'm going to sew on a buttonhole on the left side where it's marked. Now I've uh, cut open the buttonholes I made earlier, and I'm adding in my integrated belt. Here I'm using a cotton webbing. Uh, I do switch it out later for a regular nylon webbing, but here I'm just pulling it through the uh, tunnel I made in my waistband with a safety pin.
Here I'm attaching my one inch buckle to my webbing. Uh, depending on what kind of buckle you use, the instructions to attach it may be different. Uh, but here's how uh, I did it for my particular buckle. My buckles are now attached and I've also sewn on a front button for my pants. So here are the finished pants. I've rinsed off the washable marker and here are a couple other items that I've uh, styled them with. And uh, here is me showing off the uh, convertible zip off feature of these pants or at least part of it. Um, I had a lot of fun designing and making these, so if you guys uh, make your own, please tag me on Instagram. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this so long.